Hey you guys, welcome back to Flickers of Fear. So as anybody that has Netflix probably knows, I mean, Netflix is generally not the first or the fourth or the ninth or <laughs> the 15th or anything uh, streaming service that you would go to when you were looking specifically like for some good horror. Like they do have some good stuff on there, but you know, other streaming services tend to have like a better selection. However, uh, every now and then they will surprise me by platforming a real kind of uh, underseen gem, I guess. Uh, I had previously heard about this movie only really through word of mouth. It turned up on a couple of uh, lists of, you know, best horror movies that you haven't seen or best horror movies on Netflix or something like that. And so, you know, happily, I sat down to watch it and I'm like, wow, this is actually really, really awesome. So this is a road trip thriller and it's called Coming Home in the Dark and it's from New Zealand. And it premiered at the Sundance Film Festival back in January of 2021. And then I think came to Netflix like in autumn of the same year. So sometimes September, October, 2021, something like that. But I only just now heard about it like a couple of weeks ago. So I thought I'd go give it a watch because it, you know, I saw it recommended in a lot of places. So this was actually directed by a guy named James Ashcroft. This is his feature length debut. He had previously only made shorts prior to this, as far as I'm aware, and maybe like an episode of television. Um, and the screenplay was actually penned by him and a guy named Eli Kent. And it was based on a short story from 1995 by uh, a New Zealand author named Owen Marshall. Now, the story is very, very straightforward. And if you are at all familiar, you know, with horror of any kind, particularly particular, you know, subgenres, um, then this setup will be very familiar to you. But I have to say that the character work in this one is great. The acting is great. And it's just like a brutal, very, very tense movie. And I think all of those things like make it a really mesmerizing watch. It just kind of like leaves you really, really anxious and like really unsettled like the whole time that you're watching it. So at the very beginning of the movie, uh, we open on this just awesome, like very, very ominous kind of shot. And it immediately sets this whole like disquieting tone for the whole movie that just, it just maintains the whole time. So we see just like, I think it's a Mercedes and it's clearly sort of abandoned on the side of the road. Uh, it's door is like wide open and there's this swatch of like pink fabric. Like it looks like it's maybe from someone's skirt or something. And it's just kind of hanging out the, out the door. I was going to say driver's side, but I guess it's in New Zealand. So I guess it's the passenger side. Uh, and it's just kind of like a gently, undulating in the breeze. So the camera kind of lingers on this silent, empty car, you're presuming it's empty, for a few moments. And then like another vehicle passes by on the road and like doesn't stop. And so, you know, the, which is kind of good because the occupants of that car are just kind of like oblivious to the foreshadowing, like to their own fates, which is going, going on like right over here, like on the shoulder of the road. So we then get introduced in uh, to our main characters, which is like a family of four and they're on a road trip into these, you know, breathtakingly gorgeous, like very craggy mountains of New Zealand. So the dad's name is Alan uh, Hogenrod, which is like a Dutch last name. So they call him Hoagie. And uh, he has a wife named Jill. Both of them are teachers. And they have two teenage sons whose names are Micah and Jordan. So for the first few minutes, I mean, it, the movie doesn't spend a lot of time. Like, it's very economical, like, with the character development, which is one of the things that I really liked about it. Because really, just for the first few minutes, there's kind of like, you know, the same way that a lot of these kind of road trip horror movies, you know, start out. You kind of have arguments between the family members in the car, just establishing everyone's personalities and, like, their relationships with one another. They're kind of having arguments over music, you know, stopping for snacks and attempting to, like, play stupid games just to like pass the time because it's a long drive. So not long after that, uh, the family arrives at their destination and they start kind of hiking into the foothills or whatever. And there's also a little bit more like very minimal like character development, kind of hinting at the different relationships or the nature of the difference of the relationships that Hoagie has with his two sons. But it's very, very subtle. Like I said, it's very economical and I really, really, really liked that. Now, one of the sons, I think it's Micah, he sees what appears to be like the silhouettes of two men or two people like over a ridge, like some distance away. And the people are like waving at them. Like they're like, hey friends or whatever. 
Now, Micah does not like this at all and like seems really uneasy about this, as you would be, because there's like no one else around. But he doesn't say anything to it, like about it to anybody else because he figures, oh, well, you know, they're way over there. Maybe they're also hiking and it's not that big a deal. So the family, like eventually they set up kind of a picnic lunch at a spot on the waterfront. There's kind of like, you can tell it's kind of like a campsite that people use because there's like a public toilet, like across from the like, on the water, like on the other bank, but there's really no other sign of civilization anywhere other than like, you know, just some kind of rudimentary trails and whatnot. So they've only been sitting there a very brief time when the two men from the ridge, you're presuming that's who it is, uh, kind of approach them. And from the first sight of these two, uh, the family are like pretty much put on their guard. The first man, who's like the one who does all the talking, is this kind of lanky white dude with a beard and a mustache. And he has like these really dark eyes and he has kind of this very penetrating stare. He just gives off, he exudes like kind of a, an air of being dangerous, you know what I mean? The other guy is an even taller and even lankier uh, indigenous guy, and he just like barely, barely speaks at all. So the white man introduces himself as Mandrake, which you're led to believe is probably not his real name, and his companion as Tubbs. Although, like I said, Tubbs, I don't think he introduces himself because he, do he does talk, but he doesn't talk all that much. So it's pretty immediately clear that these two are up to no good. And this fact becomes pretty much indisputable once Mandrake uh, produces a high-powered hunting rifle. Uh, he doesn't point at anybody at first, but he's kind of got it there, and you're just like, oh shit, this is going to go really, really sideways. Now, he initially implies that he's just going to rob the family. In particular, he seems to want their vehicle. Now, Hoagie and Jill pretty much immediately acquiesce. They're like, here, you know, it's just a car. They throw them the keys. They're like, please just take it. But uh, the two guys then force the family to like lay face down on the ground and warn them like, don't turn your heads and look at me. And this sequence right here <laughs> is just one of the first, is the first one of like many unbearably tense sequences. Like everything is shot in either tight close-ups or is otherwise framed in such a way that when you're watching it, you're never really entirely sure like what's going to happen next, like which form the danger is going to take, like which direction it's going to come from. So it's really, really like a difficult watch. It's like very, very anxiety inducing because you're not entirely sure what these dudes kind of end game is. You know what I mean? So after a very shocking uh, development <laughs> that I won't spoil, uh, which actually serves to let the viewer know in the most violent way possible that all bets are now off. Uh, the criminals then force the family into their own vehicle and proceed to take them on another kind of road trip, which is this, this nightmarish journey that obviously they were in no way prepared for. Now, along the way, more information gets revealed about the principal characters, like both the protagonists, the family, and the antagonists, that kind of a little bit like muddy the waters of morality somewhat. I won't go so far as to say that you grow to sympathize with the attackers because Mandrake in particular is like pretty much a sociopathic monster. But as the details of their backstories and what's hinted at maybe like some prior knowledge of Hoagie's history kind of unfolds as the story goes on, it starts to become more obvious that whatever is going on here, it isn't like a stark black and white type of situation. So this movie, I mean, at its heart is just, it's a very, very simple, but it's a very, very chillingly effective thriller. I mean, it just cranks the anxiety level up to 11 from pretty much the very first frame and just leaves it there until the end credits run. Like I said, you just watch it with kind of like your heart in your mouth the whole time because you're not entirely, you're not sure what's going to happen. Like I was kind of watching it and I had kind of like a little bit of a stomach ache, but it also has like another layer of depth to it. It's kind of seeking to explore. I'm trying to like kind of talk around it so I don't like spoil too much about it, but it's kind of trying to um, explore maybe the manner in which abuse, uh, childhood abuse can kind of like reverberate back on the society that just stands by and allows it to happen. It also kind of wrestles with maybe the 
thorny problem of how many shades of gray there are that separate the actual doing of evil to, you know, actually knowing about the evil and seeing the evil occurring, but being too cowardly to do anything to stop it. Like how, like obviously doing evil is worse, but like how much better is it to just know that it's going on and not intervene or at least try to do something to, you know, to stop it, you know what I mean? Now, the movie is actually, is certainly vicious and violent, but it's not gory. A lot of the violence is actually implied or kind of kept mostly off screen. And I think that was a good decision because I think it made it like a lot more affecting because you could kind of like fill in the blanks with your own imagination, just judging by, from the people's reactions and like the sounds and things like that. So in other words, this isn't like torture porn. It's not like super, super gory or super graphic or anything, but I think the restraint actually serves to make the savagery in a little bit like feel more real to kind of like put you in it because you never really get desensitized to it like through repetition or having it you know having this thing where it has to keep like getting more and more vicious like as the movie goes on so i think it was better that they kind of kept it you know in check a little bit and everything is kind of like just kind of like off camera like I said, the acting here is also just top notch. Uh, the cast is very small, but the players are just all phenomenal. I mean, particularly Daniel Gillies, who um, plays Mandrake, and he's just like so, so menacing, like from the second that he comes on. And uh, Tubbs, who's played by uh, Matthias Lua Luafutu, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, he doesn't talk much, but his facial expressions and like his body language just convey this great complexity that in a way like makes him a more interesting and complex character in that he doesn't talk. So you're like kind of led to speculate about what's going on behind his face. You know what I mean? Now, I mean, horror horror movies like this, like horror thrillers like this are, you know, pretty much a subgenre unto themselves. It's usually called road trip horror or something like that. I mean, you have stuff like The Hills Have Eyes or um, Race with the Devil, Road Games, uh, Death Valley, The Hitcher. Uh, California, the one with a K, um, Breakdown with Kurt Russell, Wrong Turn, Wolf Creek, Wolf Creek, um, Eden Lake, like a bunch of movies like that. This is along those lines. But I think that this subgenre is so popular because the premise is so relatable to so many people. And when it's done effectively, like Coming Home in the Dark is, I think movies like this have the potential to be like really, really terrifying because we can, ob obviously there's nothing supernatural or anything like that. You can imagine yourself thrust into these same horrible grim circumstances like as the characters in the movies are so coming home in the dark really does carry on this you know storied tradition of this road trip horror and it's just this very lean mean movie it's just completely nerve jangling like the whole entire time just keeps you on the edge of your chair because you're just like expecting the worst and like i said you're not really sure what the i mean you kind of know what the dude's motivations are but not exactly and you don't really know like what they hope to achieve by what it is they're doing so you're always just kind of like on edge like seeing what's going to happen next and it also has a little bit more of like a nuanced approach to it's supposed heroes and villains and kind of like has a, a more of like a, a depth to it than maybe just like a straightforward good guy, bad guy kind of, uh, kind of dynamic. So, I mean, it's definitely one of the better new horror films that I've seen turn up on Netflix, like in quite a while. And man, like I'd recommend it to pretty much anybody who loves like a really good, genuinely frightening thriller, you know, about essentially, like I said, a hapless family that's terrorized by psychopaths, but has a little bit more going on to it as well. It's really, really good. So that will do it for this Flickers of Fear. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys again on the next one. Bye.